Okay, um, it's now gone one o'clock and I know people are busy and so we've got a lot to get through this afternoon. So I think we should get started. Welcome to this webinar on the primary care phased investment programme, sometimes referred to PCPIP. My name is Paul Vaughan, I'm a GP in Dollar Health Centre in Forth Valley and I'm working with Healthcare Improvement Scotland as a GP lead for this programme. The aims of this session are to explain the different components of the primary care phase investment programme and to share some of the learning from people and teams taking part in this programme across Scotland. And finally, to provide information about how to take part in the collaborative aspect of the programme. I'm going to begin the session with some housekeeping. Um, please take a moment to introduce yourselves in the chat. Um, if you could just you know, say who you are and what part of Scotland you're working in, that would be perfect. Unfortunately, there are too many people on the call today to do a live Q&A, and so your cameras and your microphones have been disabled. However, we really do want to hear from you and we want to know what you're thinking. Um, and so if you've got any questions throughout the, the hour webinar, then please post them in the chat. Post your comments, your questions, and the team from HIS will answer as many of these as possible through the session. This, um, whoops, sorry, this second slide in housekeeping um, just has some helpful tips on how to reply to any messages within the chat. It's useful if you do that because it keeps a thread through related messages. And finally, we are recording this webinar so that it's available to people who are not able to attend today. It will be made available on the HIS website later in the month. So, some of you have been immersed in this programme of work from the start, but I'm conscious there will be many people on the call today who do not know much about this programme or the background to the programme. And so without getting into any of the politics, there's there's plenty of that in the telly at the moment, I thought I would be helpful to summarise why we're here today talking about a phased investment programme. The 2018 GMS contract on the left side of the slide set out a vision for general practice with GPs working as expert medical generalists, taking a focus on undifferentiated presentations, complex care and whole system quality improvement with other tasks that have traditionally been undertaken by GPs being carried out by members of a wider multidisciplinary team. This was followed by a memorandum of understanding between Scottish Government, BMA, NHS boards and integration authorities covering the 2018 to 2021 period. And then a second memorandum of understanding or MOU2, which is on the right hand side covering 2021 to 2023. Now, I don't expect you to read the text on that right hand document, but MOU2 acknowledged that there was still a considerable way to go to deliver the 2018 GMS contract and asks boards to prioritise pharmacotherapy, CTAC and vaccine transformation programme and to ensure that any work around urgent care um, such as that around ENPs, mental health nurses, advanced physios, was maintained rather than prioritised. So come autumn of last year, it was clear that whilst further progress had been made across Scotland, the implementation gaps still remained. And so Scottish Government wrote to health boards and primary care leads, noting that there was some variability about how the MDT had been implemented across Scotland, and indicating that it was uncertain what funding and workforce was required to close the implementation gaps. So they therefore announced this phased investment programme, which would provide four areas of Scotland with additional funding to demonstrate what a model of full implementation might look like in practice. And the areas taking part as demonstrator sites would agree to use improvement techniques and share evaluation data that could be used to inform the longer term investment within Scottish general practice. So Healthcare Improvement Scotland is supporting four demonstrator sites and in parallel is running an improvement collaborative for GP practices across the rest of Scotland. And I'm one of the three professional leads that will be supporting this work, working with HIS to um, work with the teams that are taking part. 
And throughout this, the rest of this webinar, we're going to hear more about both of these aspects of, of work. So the programme aims to develop and continue a culture of improvement across primary care settings to support fuller implementation of the contract with a focus on improving the CRE regulated priority areas, which are pharmacotherapy and CTAC, whilst maintaining other elements of the contract. And then finally, to build the evidence to understand the national context for the GMS contract implementation over the long term and to inform longer term investment in, in general practice. This slide highlights the difference between the demonstrator work um, that I mentioned on the left hand side and the improvement collaborative on the right hand side. So the four demonstrator sites that were chosen in January, these are Ayrshire Naran, Borders, Edinburgh City and Shetland. They have been doing work to understand their system and will be sharing their progress in a moment. But in parallel, the National Collaborative, which is open to the rest of Scotland, they'll be looking at smaller and more focused improvement activities and shorter sprint sessions of about four to eight weeks in duration over the course of the next 15 months. And we'll hear more detail about what the demonstrator sites are doing and the opportunities through the collaborative at the moment. But first, I'd like to find out how many of you are already involved in this work. So a poll, a poll is going to appear on your screen in a moment. And I wonder if you could indicate on that poll whether or not you are joining this webinar as a health professional working in one of the four demonstrator sites, or whether you've signed up to be part of the National Collaborative, or whether you've just joined because you're interested but not yet involved. So I take it that poll is appearing on your screens, and if you could highlight on the poll what you're doing and, and whether or not you're involved and okay so what i'm seeing is about fifth of you are part of one of the demonstrator sites we've got 16 percent that are part of the collaborative and 63 percent that are joining because they're interested in the work but not directly involved so thank you very much I'm now going to hand over to Alison Siren from um, Healthcare Improvement Scotland. Alison is a senior improvement advisor working with this, and she's going to speak more detail about the collaborative component of this programme. Thanks, Paul. Um, so, my name is Alison Siren. I'm a senior improvement advisor in the team, and so far I've been leading the development of the national collaborative element of the programme, um, which is the bit that um, is open to anybody who's out with the demonstrator sites, so open to any primary care um, team in Scotland who are not part of one of the demonstrator sites. Um, the National Collaborative launched at the end of April, so our learning so far is primarily about what people are looking to do, what people are interested in, and um, the, the main event for this little section of the webinar is really not to hear from me, but to hear from um, Brian, who is one of our collaborative members about the work that he's hoping to do in his local area. Um, but I wanted to just share a few details about what we know about the people who've already joined the collaborative and what they're hoping to work on. Um, and then also just share the opportunity for anybody who might still like to join us. So our um, existing collaborative members, there are 98 teams and this slide gives you first the breakdown by NHS board. So. Um, Almost every board in Scotland that reminder that there are a couple that are not eligible um, because they're demonstrator sites um, and hopefully helpful to point out that for NHS Lothian, those are teams that are not within the Edinburgh City demonstrator site, which is a, a smaller area. Um, and then the, the type of team, so about 60% of the teams who've joined us are GP practices, but there are other teams as well. And, and we really um, want to work more with, with all kinds of teams across primary care. So um, some pharmacotherapy and CTAC teams, but also some other um, parts of primary care MDTs that we're working with and a few improvement teams, local improvement teams in, in boards and partnerships as well. 
And then this slide shows you what people are interested in. So um, a sprint is what we call a focused block of improvement work. So we work with a team over four or eight weeks um, and they work with a coach to improve an aspect of their service. Um, about 80% of our teams have said they're interested in joining at least one sprint. Some of them have said more than one. So um, these numbers don't necessarily add up to the total. Um, and this first chart is just showing you what people are interested in. So, so um, the, the biggest number is there for access. And then a bit of a breakdown of the topics that people are interested in. So not necessarily just in sprints, but also um, working through the collaborative and coming to some of the other opportunities to learn and to share things together with us. Um, and those are um, shown you by access and pharmacotherapy things. Um, CTAC, there's not a lot of detail and that's because our work with CTAC in, in a kind of improvement sprint is not as far developed, but that's something we're working on. And then lots of people interested in the QI skills sessions that have already started to run. So if you'd like to find out more, um, these slides will be circulated so you'll be able to click on the links, but we have a web page where you can learn more about what's happening. You can also sign up to join the collaborative. Um, and we ask people to sign up at team level, so either a practice or one, um, for example, pharmacotherapy team, CTAC team. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't work together. We just um, it's it's easier for us to process the team level than at partnership or board level. You can catch up on some of the QI skill sessions that have happened so far on YouTube. Um, and we're also holding a session in a couple of weeks time that we're calling confused about the collaborative, which is for people who are in the collaborative, but might not be quite clear on how they want to use that, how they want to work with us, or for people who are thinking, is it right for us or is it not? And, and the registration for that session is open as well. So I'm going to pass over to um, my colleague Claire and to Brian from um, Dumfries and Galloway and hear a little bit about the teams that Brian has joined the collaborative with and what they're hoping to work on over the next few months. Thanks Claire and Brian. Thanks Alison. So my name is Claire Dawson, I'm one of the improvement advisors um, working predominantly with the collaborative and I've been linking in with Brian who I will hand over to to introduce himself. Over to you Brian. Yes good afternoon my name is Brian Ponton I'm the um, practice manager advisor for Dumfries and Galloway Health Board. Great, thank you. So Brian was one of the early adopters into the collaborative and he and I have been working together to establish how the collaborative can best support the, the work of the, the teams in Dumfries and Galloway. So a couple of questions that we've prepped you for, Brian, and I suppose that it links in um, the comment I've just made with the first question is, what do you think the benefits of the collaborative are for the teams in your area? OK, thanks, Claire. Um, well, we saw that very much that the teams would have access to uh, resources, toolkits and the specialist QI advisors. Um, there'd be opportunities for networking, um, they could share learning and develop their QI skills. Dumfries and Galloway are focusing initially on the PCAP, um, specifically workflow optimization and care navigation. Uh, and we saw that the teams would have an opportunity to either refresh uh, their programs or indeed implement the program. Um, primary care services in Dumfries and Galloway run quarterly practice manager support and development events and we saw the collaborative supporting practice manager development across the region. From a pharmacotherapy and CTAC point of view, uh, it's an opportunity for uh, the teams to take stock and review their own service delivery models. Uh, ultimately, uh, we're hoping to see operational improvements to reduce GP and practice workload, support the MDT and support the sustainability agenda. Great, thanks, Brian. I think you've covered a couple of the other questions in your response there around what the teams are going to be focusing on. Um, so due to the number of teams from Dumfries and Galloway, we are offering them a a four week workflow optimization just for Dumfries and Galloway practices to support that local level um, cross pollination of sharing learning and being able to collectively test changes in, in a wider spread area. Obviously, all of that learning will be fed back into other teams who want to focus on workflow optimization through the collaborative um, through various routes. 
but it felt sensible with a large volume of teams to to offer them something quite bespoke um, to support them to to meet some of their their local QI and learning needs. Uh, the other question that um, we had for you, and it'll be interesting uh, to hear how you went about this, is what was the level of interest from teams locally initially to the offer of the collaborative? And then how have you um, worked with the teams, Brian, to help engage them with the offer and encourage them to participate? OK, so the initial response, uh, it'd be fair to say, was was limited. Um, we had already started in DNG running information sessions at the end of last year uh, ahead of our PC bid. Um, so when the collaborative came along, uh, we picked up the engagement with our clinical leads, cluster quality leads, practice quality leads, service leads, practice managers, Uncle Tom Cobley and all. Um, and we ensured that. Uh, the collaborative was on the cluster meeting agendas, all the agenda meeting agendas, PM meetings, MDT, service lead agendas, um, and meetings were attended and participation encouraged. Um, we sent reminders uh, ahead of the his information session and the launch event, and we also held our own uh, launch event, which you kindly attended, Claire. Um, and we also had a local practice provide a presentation um, on, as I said earlier, the the aspect of the programme we're focusing on, workflow optimization. Um, I think the we've also done a practice survey just to get a feel for um, who's actually implemented um, workflow optimization, um, who would like a refresh. Um, if they haven't implemented, um, would they like to discuss implementation? And we're just um, reviewing that survey at the moment, the results of that survey at the moment. I think the challenge, Claire, is to sustain interest, bearing in mind that our own sprint uh, is not planned until mid-September. Great, thanks very much. Um, so wonderful to hear about all the different routes that you took in to help us promote the collaborative. And I think we've seen the, the fruits of your labour there. We've had quite a lot of DNG teams sign up. So I'm aware of the fact that we're tight for time. So thank you very much, Brian, for coming along and sharing um, what you've been doing to help us promote and uh, encourage people to join the collaborative. If anybody has any questions, please pop them in the chat or think about registering for our Confused About the Collaborative session that's coming up and we can pick up any questions you might have about whether it feels like it's the right type of thing for you. So, handing back, I'm not sure who I'm handing back to now or I'm handing over to uh, Vicky. <laughs> I'll, no, I, I, th thanks a lot, um, Brian and Claire, for talking about that and thanks, Alison. I would just like emphasis, please put your questions or comments in the chat um, um, you know, as they come in your head and we, we can answer them. I'd like to then introduce the next part of this webinar, which is to hear from each of the four demonstrator sites. We've asked each of the demonstrator sites to give a short six minute presentation, just summarising the work that they are taking forward. And the first of these is Ayrshire Naren, and I'm delighted to welcome Vicky Campbell, Head of Primary and Urgent Care, um, to talk about the work that they're doing. Over to you, Vicky. Thank you, Paul, and afternoon, everyone. So I'm Vicky Campbell, Head of Primary and Urgent Care Services for Ayrshire and Arran, and I have responsibility for all primary care contractual services across um, North, South and East Ayrshire, and also an urgent care portfolio as well in there. Sorry, should the slides just, there we go. So just to set a bit of um, bit of context around just before we get into where we are currently um, for Asia and Aaron. So we, since the, the contract came out in 2018, we have always been of the view that we wanted one contract for Asia and Aaron. We, want, we have 53 practice, GP practices and we wanted to ensure that we had a consistency and approach in terms of all the different components of the contract. So we have always had really extensive engagement across our clusters in each of our health and social care partnerships. I have been really fortunate. I've been involved in this contract in various roles since 2018. Um, so it is a real privilege to now be part of the demonstrator site also. 
from the outset, we were always clear around um, having joint accountability and responsibility with our primary care management team. Our GP subcommittee have, have co-owned and collaborated this throughout and also our um, Health and Social Care Partnership and NHS board lead. So we took a lot of time and effort into getting those foundations right, recognising the size and scale. Um, we also produced a, a framework um, for implementation with clear roles and responsibilities around decision making and we, we've shared that and we've made that available um, as well to our his colleagues so that if, if anyone wanted to adopt that, there is already something ready made there. Um, one of the things we also came across is, is we've embedded and I would say we've now got about 280 whole time equivalent staff as part of our um, contract implementation. The majority of them fall across um, CTAC and pharmacotherapy, but we also have a range of MSK physios, mental health practitioners and also link workers. So when we bid for this demo site, we were clear, we felt we were nearly there for some components, but we just needed um, a little more, bit more resource, but also a look at some of our systems and processes and recognising that a lot of what we needed to get that full air, not maybe not full contract implementation, was more about um, different levels of staff maybe not our fully kind of um, experienced professionals but a lot of staff on the ground and um, which really was performed part of our bid um, and we've continued to engage across all our GP practices since 2018 and hold, held a number of, of wide workshops and there's really a lot of delegated um, engagement that goes through to through to the grassroots GP which has been invaluable as we've continued to evolve and develop these services. So I'm just going to give you um, just a quick snapshot look at our, um, I think it's CTAC that should be up first in the next slide. Um, so the key elements of our demonstrator site bid was to secure a, a sustainable and resilient workforce. So we had already been carrying out quite a lot of audit work in terms of activity across all our 53 practices and the biggest feedback we were getting was although we were doing 78% of the workload in general practice, um, when someone was off, off sick or off an annual leave, that workload was falling back to the practices. So this, this was a constant feedback that we were getting. So we were clear that in terms of our staffing model that we had to build in further resilience around that. But there were also queries around um, skill mix in that model also only through the learning that we've had over the last couple of years. We had a great opportunity um, during the, the pandemic. We took about, I think it was 40 nurse graduates. So we took them straight from university um, and had a really robust training programme um, led by our senior nurse, Joanne Anderson, um, to embed that service. So although we thought COVID would bring its challenges, and um, we did have a huge opportunity and we absolutely grasped that in Ayrshire and Arran. So we are very proud of that primary care educator role, nurturing um, the, these staff also, but just really keen to get that resilience. So in terms of our, our challenges, and this is the same thing throughout all the aspects of the contract, is, is just how do we manage expectations um, in terms of what the roles are there to do. Um, there is some stuff around interventions that are named within the contract versus opportunities as well, and that's like a constant tension that we feel throughout all our services. It's also around the general practice nurse role. How do we can continue to protect that? So we know through some re recent data workforce um, information that we have to paid quite a lot of um, practice nurse and resource over, not necessarily general practice nurse, but, but we do now believe there's a gap there in terms of that general practice nurse and role and we just need to support practices because we do believe there's a, a key role there for general practice nurse going forward. So over the next three months for CTAC, um, we are proceeding with um, recruiting into that resilience model. Um, we do have the challenge around data. So although we're really clear about activity data and our CTAC staff are well embedded within the GP practices, we're not sure in terms of demand, are we actually meeting that, that demand that's out there? And so we'll just get some more um, data around that over the coming months. And really as about sustainability um, and also that recruitment and retention of staff. So we have had staff who've left service but continue to work in community services but we just need to make sure this role is also as fulfilling as it needs to be to, to ensure we're retaining that skill mix of staff um, across our practices. And just on to pharmacotherapy, so again, we had done a lot of development work ahead of the demonstrator site bid, so we had got to a place where we believed the contract was all we were going to get, that was the money we were going to get, this is where we were. So we were clear because of where we were in Ayrshire and Arran, what did this mean for us? So we had already in the August prior to submitting the bid later that year had some development sessions with our GPs, with our key stakeholders, 
to think how how do we make best use of what we've got. So a lot of our development ideas had, had came out on the back of that and feedback on the ground. So we knew that the pharmacy support worker role was absolutely key to freeing up our most senior pharmacists and technicians and having everyone working to the top of the licence, but again, also fulfilling the role that they really wanted to do, um, recognising the resilience um, around a pharmacy hub. Um, we don't need everything in every single practice, and we've been working through ongoing tests of change around that. And, and that kind of recruitment and retention space, career pathways, looking at that advanced pharmacist practitioner role also. So same as CTAC, we have um, a well-established service. We have over 100 whole-time equivalents in this service and we've got good relationships. We have our challenges, but we do have the right spaces through that kind of framework I was discussing where we can discuss them constructively. We did um, do a bit of a stock take last year or in the last 18 months to see where are we against TASH transfer. So that has produced us with a, a kind of trigger tool and rag status for each practice and um, where you have the clinical director for the health and social care partnership and the pharmacy team will meet with practices um, to try and understand if there's any wider support they need to put in place. So in terms of our challenges, again, expectation, um, similar to CTAC, um, but we do, we, we manage them, we talk about them, we air them, and priorities for the next three months, is we've got some tests of change underway, um, and baseline data, just an ongoing topic. We have good activity data, but just really keen to get that baseline data. We are now progressing with our recruitment, and we've already commenced our engagement with general practice to understand what are the, the deliverables in terms of the contract, what's in our gift to do, where is the opportunity? And we have now commenced that engagement with our um, practices. But overall, for us, we are keen to try and test different things because there's some things we've just we feel we've not fully embedded. So keen to use this opportunity with the demonstrator site with the workforce we have and with a bit of additionality um, to take the opportunity to actually recommend is there anything more that we can also be suggesting or anything that we would want to adjust in terms of that national feedback also. But happy to finish there. I don't know who I'm passing to. That, that's great. Thanks a lot, Vicky, um, for going through the work that you're doing in Ayrshire and Aaron. Now, there are 145 people on the call. And we've only got one question or comment. So thanks, Carrie Lennon, for, for putting something in the comment box. Please, if you've got any thoughts or comments, you know, about what Vicky has said, post them in the chat and then we will answer them as we go through the webinar. So that's what's happening in the Ayrshire and Aaron. Next, I'd like to introduce Anthony McDavid, um, Director of Pharmacy and Interim Deputy Chief Officer in Shetland to talk about the work that's going on up there. Over to you, Anthony. Great, Paul, and thanks everyone. It's a pleasure to be able to speak to you on what Shetland's progressing with this work as well. And thank you for the introduction. So going to start where the, the project was started and the, the proposal, um, we had really clear focuses for an initial phase of this work. Um, that's the next six months, so from April all the way through to October, which was really around us trying to optimise the way we work just now in Shetland. If we had to break down into two main focuses, there, there is workload reduction and workforce increasing. Um, or expansion, and we may be able to, to reduce the, the overall workforce that we need um, in the longer term. We had really good engagement with our GPs in the past, so we've got really tight working relationships between pharmacy, nursing and, and general practice. As you would expect in a small board, there's no big barriers, no big walls. We all know each other and the relationships that people have between teams and individuals are extremely strong. So it gives a good position for implementation. Data baseline is also really strong. We have a, an excellent team of data enabled um, individuals. We have data curious um, operational leads and we use information to, to try to understand what we need to do next for our system and try to understand the problems we should focus on. So we're already in a good position to articulate what the things we think will work best for Shetland. With emergent ways of working um, in primary care locally and that's really around how we've approached our digital infrastructure um, and how we've enabled our teams to to be accessible to all the practices across Shetland and to make sure that we're providing as best as possible. But understanding that we were doing so in a, a really limited delivery uh, envelope, we understood that we could achieve about 60% of the workload associated with pharmacotherapy with the current allocation of resource that we had. The additional data requirements in us was a really interesting phase for us where we, we really tried to ask specific questions about are we focusing on the right problems? Do we have the, the best problem definition and, and are we ready to go forward and, and take this to the wider team to go and engage um, and understand that these are the things that we, we think are achievable, but they're also the things that are important. 
Um, and we had a good modelling approach to to workforce related to the workload. Um, and we've been revalidating that throughout the um, the last couple of months when we've started the work. We had good local problem recognition. I think that's important for anything that you should start with a good problem and then you should define that problem um, and then take the, the solutions forward from that. And that was really backed up and there was good agreement across operational leads, GPs and clinical teams. When we were developing a proposal, it was helpful for us as a, a small board to take a good, robust QI approach and it's been really helpful um, and an island board to have has so involved where we've got access to QI improvement methodology and we're looking to leave a legacy of QI um, throughout the islands with this work. And as I said, we're, we're going to continue to take a dual focus on this where we're looking to expand the workforce um, as well as reduce the workload, focusing mainly on our high volume low value activities and how we can remove as much of them as possible. We have a wider programme of primary care redesign, so we already had some governance in place around how we're, we're looking to redesign primary care in Shetland for the longer term. Um, we've also undertaken some work around to redesign our acute site that included our primary care team and considering how we deliver for Shetland rather than around specific localities and um, cost maintaining the importance of continuity of care throughout the islands. We were embedded um, within our local governance approach through the partnership um, and with our GPs and the cluster and the quality improvement focus we had. Our cluster is quite representative of the, the different clinical teams, including permanent representation for pharmacy, nurses and practice managers, as well as GPs. So we've had all the, the governments in place to do a good job of this. Um, if we could convince the Scottish Government that we were a good proposal for it, and I think we've done a good job of that. The, the developing relationships with the operational delivery and um, operational governance routes have been key for us that we need to make sure our system understands what we're doing. We are a small system and we can only cope with so much change at any given time um, and making sure that we're keeping that scope really tight and we've, we've managed to achieve that through good project management um, input. The resource we've been providing in Shetland has really helped us expand that additional support you need to run programmes really effectively um, with the, the finite resource we have for our clinical leads that are leading on specific actions. One of the key focuses in Shetland or, or key principles we're using throughout this programme is how we, we develop functions across general practice and community health and social care rather than develop new services. I think where we have existing service infrastructure, the, the functionality and who's doing the functions within the, the, the way that we're delivering just now is, is more important than setting up individual services and, and creating more boundaries around teams um, or people or relationships. Our key challenges were recruiting um, to professional or recruitment of professional registrants. If you can understand Shetland sits at the top of the UK, um, but it's also surrounded by water. So convincing people to come here is quite challenging and anyone who understands rural or remote healthcare would know that the position we have for housing and um, pathways for professionals to become healthcare professionals in remote and rural areas is really difficult. So we're always recruiting for that competitive external Scottish market. And it can be made even more challenging when it is short term recruitment. So we're being quite ambitious and quite pragmatic about how we recruit resources into the team, relying on some of the strengths we've got around our remote delivery um, and our hub way of working and some of the digital enables we already had um, embedded as well. We've got a small senior officer resource to do this. Um, it's not typical that direct pharmacy would be involved in this, but I am, um, because it's important that it's got good leadership um, and that the teams who are, are doing this work are well supported, and that's connected into our overall strategic delivery plan. We've got good GP resource. We've been able to free up some time from some of our GPs to be involved in this work and um, making sure that they're a core stakeholder um, and they're part of the, the core delivery team. Um, and one of the challenges we've, we've found is, is how we successfully recruit people for the, the short term of doing that. 18 months can seem like a long period of time, but it's really not when you're you're doing an ambitious piece of work like this. The ongoing funding position continues to be a challenge for us, but I think we've, we should be able to business case within our own local um, funding, hopefully successfully throughout time, but also that policy informing position is really important for us. So our strengths is having good data and good baselines and um, together with good ideas and solutions and ways of delivering will, will help form that or inform that policy position going forward. And our digital resource for systems change, we've identified that this is highly variable across Scotland and it's a it's a barrier for us just now, um, plus we're waiting for GPIT procurement. So it's similar themes that you would expect in all other areas um, for those who are on the call today. 
Key areas of data we recognise that going through this, and hopefully this is some in other areas, we don't ask our patients um, for their feedback often enough, and we do have access to the history um, questionnaire that's just been released in May, but we're certainly not doing this in a, a meaningful sense, so we're looking to improve that through this work. Um, and we'll be able to share that methodology beyond this, uh, beyond Shetland. Our ESCO database work is really helping us understand how our system's performing, but we're doing this in a way that is not for management, it's for operational teams to know how they're doing. Um, it's for operational teams to know how they're doing compared to other areas and um, to support understanding where's better, who's got best process um, and how can they improve. And workload understanding how we keep revalidating and iterating our tools, given we've got the Healthcare Staffing Act in place now that we, we do have a duty as organisation to make sure we've got the, the right amount of resource in place to, to achieve the work, to keep our working safely. So the overall objectives for our programme in Shetland are removing low value work from the system and um, developing that local quality framework because we should do something with the data we're producing through this and redistribute this work whilst avoiding hard boundaries. And that's a, a key principle that's always been in Shetland that we have pharmacists, GPs and nurses sharing the work and it's not pharmacotherapy for pharmacists only. It's not filled over by the pharmacy team, but it's filled over pharmacotherapy through that, that shared function and um, provided by our, our doctors and, and pharmacists and nursing staff together with the, the, the CTAC work. We're aiming to deliver redesigned work done in primary care um, and CTAC's been our, our biggest part of redesign, how we, we deliver a CTAC function across a, a really big geography um, effectively and we've, we've recognised that it's provided a huge benefit to adjusting GPN leave um, where we've got our directly employed GPs, uh, GPN staff. It will complement our wider primary care, primary care redesign. So in Shetland, we are predominantly 2C practices, um, which means that we operate about 97% of the list size are directly managed by the health board. And that's a different proposition from the rest of Scotland. Um, and we should achieve, or we should work towards trying to achieve our, our whole system working in Shetland. So yeah, uh, we're looking to use our systems and data as effectively as possible. And automation is one of the, the themes we're looking to, to draw into to the Shetland proposal, um, how we can use our, our Shetland Health Intelligence platform that's in development um, to take some of the work away from our staff and allow them to um, spend their time on higher value activities, particularly around polypharmacy, um, care home reviews, and dealing with complex multimorbidity. Um, and we'll be able to hopefully demonstrate that through time. That's great. Thanks, Thanks, Anthony. Thanks for giving us an overview of what you're doing in, in Shetland. Um, our third demonstrator site is based in Edinburgh City. And so I'm going to hand over to Caroline Houston, who's a primary care project manager um, with NHS Lothian. Over to you, Caroline. Hi, thanks for the introduction, Paul, and welcome everyone to today's event. Um, so I'm here to introduce um, Edinburgh's bid that we have put in. Um, and just to give a bit of background initially, um, Edinburgh covers a largely urban area with a very diverse population. Um, and serving around about 10% of the Scottish population, and that's about 8.4% of the GMS resource. Um, one of the major challenges in Edinburgh is our population growth, which has steadily risen from around 524,000 to 601,000 patients over a 10 year period. And our bid proposes to focus on one particular area of Edinburgh, which is the South East, which is around 65,000 patients. Um, and this area was chosen because of the population increase specifically there and the demand on the um, practices that are in that area, of which there are nine. Um, and recently, five out of six, five and six of those have closed. So the aim for Edinburgh was to demonstrate that with fuller implementation of CTAC and pharmacotherapy, along with um, an enhanced PCIP team, which is additional to our bid, um, that we could restore um, a sustainable workload and equilibrium between those teams. Um, so our proposal then comes in four legs. And they're all colour coded for ease for a uh, presentation and also for understanding. So the first leg of that is our CTAC and practice nursing. And we would want to increase the consistency of the CTAC service in Edinburgh. Um, and that would be doing 90% plus of level one um, work within the southeast. 
We're also looking to align the practice nursing to the national workforce strategy. So that leg has actually got two sections in it to combine those to work well within a practice. For pharmacotherapy, um, we're looking to implement a hub. Um, and within that have our um, pharmacy support workers, which are additional to the res resources that we already have. And so what we want to do is make sure that our techs and our pharmacists are working to the top of their licence and introducing the new pharmacy support worker role to embed in practice and also within our new hubs. We do have an additional leg that some of the other areas don't have, and that is our additional um, multidisciplinary teams. So we've selected three practices within Edinburgh, two of which will have additional um, multidisciplinary teams, and they will have to increase their list size by about 2,000 patients. And we also have one practice who will also have additional multidisciplinary teams, and they will remain um, with their current list size. So we want to just evaluate the, the value of the MDT teams in our, in our areas. Um, so on to our next slide, where we are now. So with our CTAX we've, and our nursing, we've met with our um, senior nursing leads. And so that all our nursing and um, practices across the area are involved and there's no um, negative impact in implementing a new project. So we have good engagement with them. We have started our recruitment process and that's actually going quite well for our nursing teams. And um, so we're looking to increase um, some band fives for our new CTAC and also uh, a lead nurse um, so that they can engage well in the project. And we do have a week of care audit for all our all of our areas to try and get some baseline data on the work that's taken place so far. Uh, with pharmacy, we have our hubs, so we're looking to recruit some new technicians and also our pharmacy support workers, and we also have a band aid lead. In terms of our multidisciplinary teams, we're doing a week of care audit in practice with everyone who works in practice. So that is our um, all of our clinicians, our nursing teams, and our administrators to staff um, so that we can understand the working there and evidence who are the right people to bring in for our MDTs. And in terms of our overall project, we have done um, a good amount of base work in terms of inequality assessments, and that's for all legs of our project. And we have a specific public um, involvement coordinator who's doing that piece of work with us and our patient base within the southeast of Edinburgh. And the strengths that we think we have in Edinburgh are um, in terms of CTAC, we've already got an established service. We're just trying to improve that with um, another CTAC hub within the area. Um, we have done an evaluation on our service in 2022. So we're taking the learnings from that to help implement the new rooms that we will have. Um, and we want to obviously increase our um, capacity within that area for CTAC. For pharma Therapy again. We've in Edinburgh. We've done a fantastic job of having our pharmacists embedded and valued in practice. So we certainly don't want to lose that, and we want to build on that with our um, new teams and with our hub service working well for practices currently. But we want to offer that service to everybody in the southeast. Um, and again, we have um, a good history in Edinburgh of data evaluation um, of the services we have. So we will build on that with the new model. Um, for our multidisciplinary teams, again, we've got really good relationships with our practices um, and we've done a deep dive report in August 23 to evaluate the impact of our multidisciplinary teams. So our week of care audit will help determine who should go into our practices and our history of good evaluation should hopefully make sure that we're getting the the outcomes of the project to support Scottish Government and, and yourselves going forward. We do have a collaborative approach, so we've engaged with our clusters, our practice manager teams, um, also our practice nursing teams, um, and also all of our governance areas that we have in Edinburgh. As with everybody in the project, there are challenges. Um, a lot of those will be similar themes, as Anthony has referred to. Recruitment is still one in Edinburgh, uh, despite it being quite central. 
and also retention around that as well. Um, we'll also have some admin challenges with our CTAC, it's a new site, um, and we want to understand the impact of the CTAC on um, our nursing teams and developing the nursing roles along with the national programme. For pharmacotherapy, um, we're also looking for new premises for our hub and we need to understand um, the definition of the pharmacy support workers. This has been done in other areas and hubs, but it's never been done in practice with practice teams. So that's what Edinburgh is trying to develop and understand at the moment. Um, in terms of our MDTs, we're quite comfortable with that at the moment, but the challenge will be recruitment of those roles because we know um, we've used that quite a lot in, in Edinburgh already. Um, the overall project, obviously, we need the recruitment of the relevant workforce and competency levels. So we will be employing some people who are currently at their skill level, but others we will need to do a development programme with them. Um, and we want to really focus on measuring the impact and the quality assessment and make sure that we have that right in this area of Edinburgh. So priorities for the next three months, um, a summary of just what was said there, it's obviously accommodation for CTACs and hubs, it's recruitment across those areas, um, and really trying to understand the impact of the programme within Edinburgh and the wider population in Scotland. So thank you. That's great. That's really good to hear what you're doing in, in Edinburgh, Caroline. So the last of the four demonstrator sites is, is Borders. No. And I'd like to hand over to Owen Simpson, who's going to tell us about the work that they're doing there. Over to you, Owen. Hi there, everyone. Um, thanks for having me today. I'm um, standing in for Cathy Wilson, our General Manager of Premier Community Services, who unfortunately couldn't make it. Um, I am the PCIP program manager and um, within PCIP um, taking the lead for delivery of the demonstrator site within the borders. First, I'll just give you a little brief uh, introduction to where we are. Um, so within pharmacotherapy, the team currently delivers a proportion of the level one activity that takes place in general practice in the area. Um, the team's made up of pharmacists and pharmacy technicians, and these all work within the practices at the moment. They focus on medsrex, IDLs, um, and then assisting the practice with acutes and repeat prescriptions. The CTAC team, um, we haven't uh, we have an established treatment room service within the borders. Um, this is uh, been implemented um, from prior to the 2018 GMS contract. However, access to this treatment room service um, varies significantly between the practices that exist um, with lots of legacy arrangements in place um, that we have to navigate. So with that variation in arrangements, there's obviously lots of variation in the service offered um, between the different treatment rooms. The access to treatment rooms is also not uh, universal across the area. So it's a it's a patchy picture with treatment rooms. Um, in terms of where we are at the moment, we have completed the two pay process of any um, healthcare support workers that were working within practices doing phlebotomy. Um, and uh, we have also recruited new capacity for phlebotomy as well as that. So we've got a good skill mix of experienced phlebotomists and uh, newly recruited healthcare support workers providing bloods. Um, and that is covering now all of the bloods done in the borders. Um, so moving on to our proposal, within pharmacotherapy, um, our plan is to improve the quality and sustainability of the prescribing practices by optimizing efficiency within the service and the aim to do that is through a, uh, a hybrid practice hub based model. So what that means is that we'll have pharmacy technicians um, moving into a central hub. This will hopefully release time through reduced travel because obviously that's quite a large area of the borders and there's lots of time lost to travel to get people out to practices at the moment. Um, 
they'll remote to the multiple practices in a session so we can move it, you know if the task list on a day is smaller in one practice we can pull that resource and therefore gain efficiencies that way and um, we're hoping and and we've got from feedback in a lot of other areas that have implemented hubs already that the support and teamwork within the within these hubs um helps with isolation and helps with support for these staff we also will release physical space in the practices by doing so which is also going to be helpful as that's an issue locally um, our pharmacists will continue to visit the practices to run clinics they'll liaise with the gps and continue to maintain a functioning mdt and um, they'll also hot desk in the hub so they'll still touch base and create that team uh, environment um, in addition to the hub for our existing pharmacotherapy work stream, we're also going to implement a new service, which is will be a high-risk medications monitoring service. This is going to take over from the uh, what was previously that that task was previously undertaken by the GPs locally. This will be run um, by a, a lead pharmacist, but the work will be protocol driven and undertaken by pharmacy support workers. Um, we're really excited about this model. We're hoping that it creates a much better bridge between secondary care through the shared care protocols that we've developed um, to ensure higher quality of monitoring of these medications. We're also planning to addition, additionally recruit um, two pharmacists to work on boosting sustainable practice within our prescribing. So they'll work in the hub, they'll target increasing the rates of zero prescribing in the in the region, looking at polypharmacy reviews as well and general efficiency projects. Um, so within CTAC, um, the the task is uh, we're starting from less of a uh, clear baseline. So we plan to implement a full CTAC service based within practices um, with bookings made through a central hub. We've already done the two pay element at the top there. And um, this design should be flexible. Um, so we're hoping that we can offer patient appointments um, in different localities through the booking hub so that patients don't have to just attend the service that's provided within the practice they're registered at. Um, we also have a couple of um, practices where this model may not be entirely fitting. So we're proposing some different ways of working for our only remote and rural practice and uh, another practice that has much closer links to Edinburgh than actually to the Borders General. Um, also, the delivery of this element of the plan will be in three phases. So I was talking about phlebotomy a lot earlier. We'll be delivering that first, we'll then be delivering the admin hub, and then we'll move out to trying to standardise the existing treatment service we already have. Okay, and um, just briefly go over our strengths. So we have a long-standing close working relationship between the health board and the GPs that represent GP sub on our local PCIP delivery. It's, it's, we call it PCIP exec. It's a, a local committee that um, combines the GPs, the I, IJB and the health board. Um, additionally, I think it's a real strength within borders that we are a single co-terminus health and social care partnership, um, which reduces complexity that I know Ayrshire and Aaron have with um, so many uh, HSCPs. Um, so our initial change ideas and the models of provision focus on maintaining the services in practices and um, wherever practical to facilitate the most value adding to the MDT working and I, I think this is also important to consider in the context of the borders which is um, a very spread out area and it's going to be um, a lot harder to centralize some of some of the services we provide and um, we are also looking to test change ideas focused on improvements to how these practice-based mdts work so trialing mdt meetings within practice and so on and um, i think we've got a flexible approach to the practice specific context as well for instance the model i already mentioned um around remote and rural nursing um so challenges we face i'll 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 go through these and, and you can look at the slides because um, I believe I'm a bit uh, behind on time. We do face delays to the programme if we have challenges recruiting. Um, for instance, in pharmacotherapy in particular, that's a, a real challenge locally, which I'm aware is a, a national problem as well. Um, this means we may face challenges in um, testing some of the changes we want to in our proposal. 
um, we obviously face um, lead times with delivering the physical infrastructure required for the hub. Um, and then finally, and, and this is quite key, is we, we really are focusing on trying to keep GPs engaged in this program and trying to continue to demonstrate to them the, the benefits of, uh, of, of what we're offering. Okay. And um, finally, just to run through the timescales, um, these slides were previously produced um, for another demonstrator site day. So um, all of the May ones have been signed off, which um, makes us look quite good. Um, we then throughout June are largely doing um, recruitment and setting up of infrastructure and so on. Um, in July, we'll start to um, test some of our recruitment within the physical hub as we start to get it set up alongside the digital infrastructure for remote access to practices. And then in August, we'll start to trial actually rolling out the services in our proposal to the to practices in a staged uh, rollout. Thank you very much. Um, back to you, Paul. Great. So hopefully we've all got a better understanding of the improvement work that each of the four demonstrator sites is doing at health board level or HSCP level, um, and also the opportunities that are available through the primary care collaborative. What I've heard today is that each of the four demonstrator sites are at slightly different points in implementing their plans and each with a slightly different area of focus. Some looking at a hub and spoke model to provide services. Some looking at the best skill mix between, say, pharmacists, pharmacy technicians, pharmacy support workers, looking at how to move from level one core pharmacotherapy services to levels two and three. Some looking at developing evening and weekend um, CTAC services, the use of nurse graduates to support CTAC and considerations about how best to recruit and deliver MDT services, particularly in rural and remote areas. From Healthcare Improvement Scotland's perspective, we will be looking at the impact of these models on how patients can access and receive care. You know, we want to ensure that we don't compound any inequalities that already exist and examine what changes mean for people living in areas of socioeconomic deprivation on frail elderly people, you know, on people living in rural and remote areas. We'll also be looking at the impact on the MDT and examining what makes a good team. We'll be looking at the impact on general practice, of course, examining the extent to which these changes allow GPs to act as expert medical generalists, on whether it feels frees up time for um, for GPs to focus on people with more complex needs, on whether it improves or worsens continuity of care, and also the extent to which additional MDT staff might generate more work through additional investigations, clinical reviews or tasks to the GP. So we'll be reporting back and sharing progress with everyone interested in general practice in Scotland through webinars such as this and through the primary care section on the HIS website. I see the chat box has been busy. We don't, we, we're we going to finish in time, so we don't have time to go through um, the comments individually. We will answer them on the chat box. I note that some of the themes around the questions are about, you know, how resources are being allocated, um, you know, taking deprivation into consideration. There are questions about multi-professional engagement, which I think is a really important aspect of this work. Um, and we will take our time and we, we will answer them. We're hoping to put on similar webinars like this in the future, but only if